Hello and welcome back to the 67 Hail Hail YouTube channel. Like and subscribe if you're a fan of our content. Again, we're joined by Jackie McNamara and your usual host, Hamish Carton here, a Celtic legend in the house for our 10 in a row bids. And today we're going to talk a bit about the position that Jackie played in at Celtic as a, as a legend of the club, winning multiple trophies, hundreds of appearances and becoming a real fan favourite by the end of his career. So... We're going to talk about, about, what, about what it means to be a fullback for Celtic and, and how to make it as a fullback at Celtic. And Jackie, I'd just like to take you back to the very start of your career before you joined Celtic. How was it that you kind of became a fullback in the first place? I actually uh, started at, at Dunfermline. I was a midfielder and the, they put me back to right back in one game uh, and I did okay. Um, got forward and linked well, defended well. Then the next game, they started me there. Uh, away at still in Albion. Okay. And I never looked back, enjoyed it. I'd, I always loved uh, getting forward, uh, up and down, defending. And, uh, and it's a position that it took a little bit to, to get to understand, you know, defensively. But, you know, I was judged on both early days when I... When I was fortunate enough to get the move to Celtic with the great Tommy Burns, uh, that's what my job was. You know, it was getting forward, supporting, and getting back in. You know, and linking with Simon down that right hand side, yeah. and it was a fantastic time to, to be at the club. Um, you know, I came in the fourth of October '95. Uh, I'd missed, obviously, missed a few games at the start of the season. When I missed one, it was an old firm game back then. Um, and <laughs> Which which they won, but uh, I came in the fourth, and I was never on the losing side that season. Uh, and we, we lost the league by a couple of points, with too many draws uh, back then. But it was a position, um, you know, you were especially at Celtic, you were you had to be kind of both overlapping Simon, yeah. getting up and down. And and after told me it was Vim Janssen where he wanted his right his full back to stay. Right, and okay. which I found difficult for me personally because everybody expected me to to bomb forward. So yeah. after a few games, I found myself um, out of the right back position, and I came on. Uh, I played wing back a few times, and you know I think a turning point for me was a Liverpool match in the FA Cup where I scored. Yeah. And then um, the league games, it went to like a four four two. Uh, and I played right midfield or it was a 4-3-3 and I played on the right and it's the only time in my career I played there at Celtic was further forward um, on the right hand side I actually won player of the year and never played there again so <laughs> Vim, I think Vim seen something that other people didn't and uh, then it was uh, Dr Joe Vengos where I was again when I played I was a bit unfortunate with injuries that, uh, that season I uh, had two, two operations in my knee after the World Cup but uh, it was more a wing back position. Then it was John Barnes. Uh, it wasn't a great time. Um, <laughs> but again, that was a the shape of the team was a a four two two two. If you remember correctly, it was, I mean, on paper the team was fantastic. But in terms of playing fullback, it was such a difficult role because you know in certain games would be up in the, in the Scottish League. But other games, uh, if you recall, when Henrik broke his leg and Leon was down in that sort of coming into my area on the right hand side because a lot of teams could double up because we had, you know, the back four, then you had um, uh, Lambert and uh, Burley in front of there, then you had Lubo and Marav Mar uh, Lubo Maravchik and Ayo Berkovic in front of them, then you had Viduka and Larson before Henrik got injured. You know, it was a fantastic it was a fantastic team, but in terms of balance and structure, you know, uh Isle, Isle and um, and Lubo had a kind of free role which let their full backs sometimes be two and one. Uh, you know, and it was noticeable and especially in the old firm games back then. Um then uh, Kenny took over and it was Martin who I kind of finished my Celtic career with, with under Martin and Martin was to start off. I was in his team uh, playing wing back again until I got injured away with Scotland. Then I put uh, a gap there for a game and I ended up having to wait a little while to get another position. 
And just in terms, you were talking a bit there about the the balance between defence and attack as a fullback, and obviously that's a topic I would say is quite uh, high in Celtic Celtic fans' minds at the moment. Just with the presence of Jeremy Frimpong and Greg Taylor, it's I mean they were both outstanding on Sunday um, in terms of getting forward, and it was they were almost you know extra wingers in a sense. I've seen some pundits saying that in sports scene um, yeah. last night. Um, mm-hmm. Do you think it's you know, for a young player like Frimpong, you know, what advice would you have for him in terms of finding that balance? And do you think he should just be unleashed on that right-hand side? Or does he need to kind of bring more defensive nuance to his game um, going forward? You know, he's only a teenager at the moment, but um, does he need to find that part of his game? I think he'll, he'll find it through experience. You know, if you mm-hmm. look at the games he's played, even last year, the... You know, you hope he's learned from the, the cup final when he gets sent off. He, he mm-hmm. caught on the wrong side, you know, and, and certain bits of that, his body shape and defensively. But most of the time, uh, especially in the league, you know, they're all out attack. You know, the, mm-hmm. you know when I when I was uh, kind of taught in the position, he always had, you know, if, if the right back went forward, the left back was tucked in, he always had three. Mm-hmm. I know you have it's maybe different because you have Scott Brown protecting the, the you know the, the two centre halves, but it should always have three round about there, you know, for for cover. But you have seen that with the second goal, <laughs> Frimpong gets it, goes across, yeah. Greg puts it across, and Frimpong's yeah. at the back post putting it in. So, you know, they're on all, all out attack there. But in European games, you've seen the PSG game, and that's a, a high level. You know, the first few minutes, it comes in between the centre half and Frimpong. And he slots it in the first the first minutes of the game, so he'll learn from that. He'll learn, you know, obviously the opposition you're playing where you should be. The one v ones, I think he's he's handled it okay. You have certain teams that will hit high balls. There's not a lot of teams do that now. Whereas mm-hmm. when I when I played, you used to get a lot of diagonals and maybe people won it. And that, you know, I used to pride myself in not losing aerial battles, mm-hmm. and especially at the back post. You know, just in, in terms of thinking about, you know, Jackie was talking a bit there about domestic games and, and, and European football. What's your thoughts on kind of perhaps using El Hamid instead of Frimpong in Europe? And we'll, we'll bring Jackie in on that after. Yeah, that's the point I was I was going to bring up. And that I think most Celtic fans who have, have seen El Hamid play would agree that he's a much better defender than Frimpong. But I don't think he brings you the same, you know, energy and quality going forward. Um, so, I mean, for me, it makes a lot of sense to have El Hamid as part of our back four in the, the tough European games and even maybe the tough um, domestic games where you're going to a team who, you know, have a go and, and maybe that area of bombardment will come, the likes of Ibrox, Easter Road, games like that. Um, and I think you saw Neil Lennon did do that last season. Um, the majority of El Hamid's appearances came in Europe. Uh, and obviously Frimpong was cup tied for the early European games, but um, basically all of his appearances, I think, other than the Copenhagen one, came in um, the league or the the cup or whatever. So yeah, it'd be interesting to get Jackie's thoughts on you know whether you can have a European right back and a domestic right back, or whether you know that has to be one that's the better one than the other. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think you can you can have that you know in certain games, and and, and I think what Neil done. Which I think it was was fantastic. After you know the disappointment uh, going into winter break after losing that game, they came back and he changed it to three and mm. pushed you know they mm-hmm. pushed the full backs on into the wing backs. And he went with two strikers and the goals, the amount of goals he scored and killing teams off. Whereas you see yesterday, they have the role there the, for Christie, um, mm-hmm. but other times he brought in Charmin. Uh, went with three and went with Griffiths and Eduardo up front. So he's, I think his squad is flexible. I think you can put El, El Hamid on the right, right of the three centre halves, or go back yeah. to a four. Or you could, you know, in certain games, he's he's got enough um, options there. I think, uh, you know, the, to change not just change the personnel, but change the shape of the team uh, for certain games that maybe away from home they might go three three centre backs. You know, and, and be a bit tighter with because he's got pace that he can now use to go and attack teams and catch them on the break, which we've seen the fantastic, I think, one of the best ones that has away in uh, in Italy, the mm-hmm. Lazio game. You know, the in Charm scored a fantastic goal that night. 
I mean, it's certainly an exciting thought of, of European football, and that's something we're going to be discussing on the 6-7 Hail Hail channel a lot over the coming months, I'd imagine. And the qualifiers start later this month and it could be a tricky situation. It's an unusual situation because we'll just be playing one game um, for those qualifiers up to the playoff round. And that could be a way of ho- away from home. So, you know, we'll, we'll be talking with Jackie about that a bit, a bit later this month and, and what that all entails. But for now... We'll say goodbye to you. Like and subscribe to 67 Hail Hail YouTube channel. Check out the website and we'll see you again for a future video. Thank you.